Hey, how's it going? So I'm not working for Channel 4. That's uh, Channel 4, the UK television uh, channel. Uh, today, I'm actually going to ride a penny farthing. Have you ever wondered if you can ride a penny farthing? I'm about to find out if I can. I've heard a lot of people get injured doing this. Some go over the um, wheel and they end up killing themselves. Well, if you're watching this, someone's either found the video and ed edited it together, or I survived. But let's go see what happened. It's today I find myself in the Scottish Regiment Barracks, or the Scottish Regiment Centre in central London. And I'm surrounded by all these amazing people that have basically gave their lives to this great country and the people of the world. Without them, we, we would be living in a far different place right now. But I'm not here, well, I am here to sort of recognize them, but the main reason I'm here is because of this, this contraption. For the first time ever, I'm going to try to cycle one of these. Have you ever wondered if it's possible to cycle a penny farthing? I mean, I have to, I have to admit, I've now got to a ripe age where I've never done this. It's on my bucket list. I'm rather, rather excited about doing this. So ambition will be not to fall off, not to break my neck or bash my skull in. Let's see what happens. I believe I'm going to be in the capable hands of an ex-Royal Marine. And uh, hence the reason we're in here. I believe it's because he's an ex-Royal Marine. He's able to hire out this sort of place to practice on a penny farthing. And we're then going to tour around London. And if you're curious about this and you want to do something like this, it's all on the Airbnb experiences. There's a link below in the description. But let's see what happens. So the penny farthing gets its name because back in the day, the penny was the biggest coin in England, and the farthing was the smallest coin. So you had the penny farthing. I think that's how it works. Today we are going to be doing a penny farthing bike tour. My main aim is, uh, in the shortest space of time as possible, to teach you uh, boys to uh, ride a penny farthing bicycle uh, as safely as possible. Teach me. We've been doing this uh, bike tour for about uh, six years, seven years. I've taught hundreds of people to ride. Only a few have fallen off. I like those odds. Um, so, in my experience, I, I've ridden this bike from Land's End to Jolly Groats in 11 wow. days. Wow. Uh, I'm captain uh, of the England Penny Farthing Polo team. But it's slightly more difficult to remove one's foot from the stirrups, but the, uh, the pedals you can free yourself from quite quickly. And, See how he's always defending that one like a football player. So we gradually start to discover more and more of the nuances of this rather interesting sport. And also have uh, three Guinness World Records for riding these bikes. Um, Mark, uh, who's a, a stalwart member of the Penny Farthing Club, and incidentally you become automatic um, members of the club uh, by being here and join, joining us on the tour today. He also plays uh, polo for England on these bikes. A German, uh, Baron von Dreis, first patented, uh, you know, what resembled a two-wheeled machine, called a lath machine, um, but that was without pedals and cranks. So it was just a, a very basic sort of dandy horse or hobby horse type bike which you propelled with your feet. Then a, a Frenchman uh, kind of came to the concept of putting uh, pedals and a crank on the front wheel um, in France and then uh, brought the, the idea over to the UK with the industrial revolution that was going on. We could make the bikes quicker and faster and it soon transpired that the we discovered that the, well they discovered that the bigger the wheel, the further and faster you could go on one rotation. Therefore, um, the wheel got bigger and bigger at the front. Um, the small wheel, small wheel at the back was just a stabilizing wheel. So from the 18, uh, 80s onwards, penny farthing riding and racing was a, a major thing. I mean, tens of thousands of people would come out and uh, you know, watch the, uh, the athletes and, and riders of the day compete for the, uh, for the prize money. 
and uh, it was really hugely popular for about a 20, 25 year period. Um, and then of course uh, in the 1890s, early 1890s, the safety bicycle, uh, which is essentially a cousin of what we, um, what we know today on the road, uh, you know, was, was developed and this became obsolete. But as you probably gathered, a bit of a resurgence in recent times, and um, hopefully we're doing our little bit with the Penny Farthing Club in, in keeping the, uh, the heritage of this amazing bike alive. It really is quite special, it's very simple, and really isn't that difficult to, to ride. Suffice to say that you are a metre and a half off the ground, particularly you, Andy, you're going to be probably two metres off the ground by, by the time you're on the bike. So um, it's important to, to learn the techniques correctly um, and to you know, observe the the, the things that we've learned, Mark and I, uh, over the years that keep you safe and not um, doing what's called a header or anything. Uh, silly like that. The header is basically when you get it wrong, you hit a curb or a bus um, or a pothole in the road and you essentially, your momentum takes you over the uh, over the top of the handlebars, uh, and it's called a header for, for obvious reasons, which uh, we are going to avoid uh, today. So the first thing we do is we line the bike up in a straight line. We don't want to be going off at an angle, so everything nice and smooth. You want at least 20 metres uh, clear space, clear road in, in front of you. Completely safe, in my view. Fancy a go? Yeah. It's so, it's so, you know what this is? It's like the first time your, um, your father teaches you to ride a bike. It's all <laughs> memories of a three or four year old coming flashing back. <laughs> yeah. Just reach Can back I do it the peg. non elegant way? And... Just reach back for the peg. Don't forget to hold the bike when you. <laughs> of course. All right. Happy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's just straight back. There's the peg. Yeah. Take the weight. Left foot down. Hop off to the left, holding on to uh, the handlebar. Okay. Each one of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should we um? Do you want to have a go? <laughs> or yeah. Have yeah. A yeah. I think it was um. Once you once you know where that back foot is. Yeah. And don't forget, you've just done that the first time. When you've done it 10, 20 times. You get more used to it. Yeah. It's just the sort of... When we can feel that you've got the balance... You just sort of let go. You can let go. Because you can feel when you're aiming. Mm -hmm. So you, you, get, you have a lighter touch. When you go... I've got it. And then the nice bit is, is you stand there and they don't, you don't realise you're riding it. You, know, you do realise you're not riding this bike without... <laughs> it's quite a nice moment. <laughs> because if you tell them you're going to let go... Mm -hmm. It's this nervousness. It's the panic, yeah. It's, I, the hard part, I think, is the getting off, but obviously, I think you say, when you've done it 10 times, it's sort of, it's that, it's that, it's that movement, because it's not a natural movement, is it? That's natural, but then going back, going, yeah.
I know how to write a penny farthing. Show me. So here we are in Smith's there. Well done for uh, getting here. Uh, Smith Square is a beautiful uh, sort of period-esque um, circuit. Um, it's actually a circle rather than a square. So why it's called Smith Square, I'm not entirely sure. But it's very beautiful. It's, it's about 100 metres or so uh, in, you know, in, a, in a distance before you get back round to me. And uh, we'll be practising the mount, the riding and the dismounting in this location. It's pretty quiet, uh, particularly on a Sunday. So uh, it's about the safest place that I could find in London to practise um, uh, you know, teaching novices the, uh, to getting up to speed to ride the, the penny farthing bike. Okay, so left foot on the peg, just like we've been doing uh, to get here, yep. exactly the same, nice straight push, determined to take off, yep. keep steering the bike, looking forwards, get onto the seat and then join the pedals, quick glance down what the pedals are doing, put your feet on the pedals, nice and smooth transition and ride around the Square. Where should I be getting on the seats? Probably around about here. Okay, well, okay. So sort of straight up and... So ride towards, push towards me, stand up, sit down, right away past me. Okay. Okay? All Good, right. nice check on. Yep. When you're ready, push, push, push. Get the bike moving, stand up, toe. Good take off, commit to it, push, push, push. Get the bike moving. Nice and smooth. Right foot on the pedal, slightly more. That's it. Hands on the outside, you've got it. Right away, centre of the road. Well done. Keep going. Mind up. This is very comfortable actually. Everyone should try this. London and uh, in this circular beautiful square I don't think there's any risk right now unless I hit a car of going over the front of the handlebars so I'm in good hands this is very safe and this is the first time us two in the high vis are on, on a penny far penny farthing quite amazing actually how long have you been uh, riding I mean, is it a writing thing you've been writing five years? Yep. yep. Yeah, about five years now. Yeah. Regular for uh, regularly teaching people um, for a couple of TV shows. We've been on Britain's Got Talent. Um, we've opened up some restaurants for some promotional videos. Fantastic. Um, set world records. What was the um, what the world world records you set? I don't know if you want to twizzle the camera when you're telling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the world record that I'll let, I'll let Neil talk to you okay. about because it, it, I set a world record for the hour record on a normal bike. Okay. But not like the professionals. Mine was one-legged. Okay. I'll okay. leave you to it. Right this Straight towards me. Reach back to the peg. Both feet off. That's it. Left foot. Where's the peg? Don't try to. We're trying to slow down. We have no bright brakes on these bikes. It's just sort of pedal back.
So uh, I'd save the racing for the track. Um, we do lots of track. The club does lots of track events and races events and so forth. And we, we want to be uh, dangerous, come and play polo. But on the streets of London, I generally just ride casually. That's why I'm dressed like a, a tart. Um, just to ride smoothly and slowly. So the worst case, even if you did crash, it's not going to hurt. Okay? If you're herring around at 20 miles an hour, it can hurt. Trust me. Follow me. Synchronise take off and pull it. Yeah, we're still good. Oh shit, it's getting. That <laughs> was close. <laughs> That's how everyone gets gets comes a cropper when the lorry turns into them. Cheapest bike there is. <laughs> Just had a very English cup of tea, uh, amazing cup of tea. We're all refreshed, and now we're going to go on our tour around London. So, this is going to be fun. I've been up to the summit, uh, main summit once, south summit twice. Um, various other pipes in between. Amazing. Well, here we are in Westminster. I've deliberately not been speaking over the video because I think the video speaks for itself. I appreciate it's a little long, but I also appreciate the fact you guys are watching. <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of background on this penny farthing experience. The person responsible and the person I'm very grateful to for facilitating this experience for myself is Neil Lawton. He's the chap in front of me right now. He's the chap that pretty much did most of the teaching. However, it has to be noted, Mark Newman, who was also there in the uh, tales, was also doing a fine job in teaching the two of us who were there that day. So regular viewers to this channel, if you're not, do click subscribe and you will see similar videos to this, will know that I'm a keen cyclist. But if you're tempted by this penny farthing experience and you have £100 in your pocket, do check out the link below. It's an Airbnb experience. That's the only way to book it. You've got to go via the Airbnb website. They do tours every Saturday and Sunday in London and also in Brighton, and they're probably going to be expanding across the country at some stage. But for the moment, it's in London and it's in Brighton. If you uh, do the tour on a Sunday, it's pretty likely Neil will be teaching. And if you head to Brighton, it will be, it's very likely Mark will be teaching you. The Penny Farthing Club was founded in 2013 by Neil. Okay. Originally because he was intrigued by these Victorian era bicycles, I've learned that the Penny Farthing Club has since developed into a community of enthusiastic riders, racers and polo players, as you saw from the video clip earlier on in the video. The club has over two dozen modern replica bicycles. 
all of various sizes and obviously offers the rider trading similar to what I experienced in this video. Events throughout the year, including private hire, corporate team building, and film and photo commissions. Now, if you do the experience like I did, you'll be introduced to the penny farthing and its history. Now, I know I included some of the history in the video, but there is actually a lot more to this experience than what I have included in this video. The tour and the experience last for many, many hours. If I included it all, that makes for a very long YouTube video. Plus, it also incentivizes you to actually go out and do this experience for yourself. It didn't take us too long, but it did take a little bit of practice to sort of really get the balance right and safely mount and ride and dismount. Once we'd mastered that, I have to say, if you're someone that's a keen cyclist, it does come fairly naturally. Hello. <laughs> a few hours spent with Neil and Mark one Sunday morning was enough for me to feel I had mastered the art of riding these, these splendid contraptions. Once you feel competent and able to hop on and off, those in the Penny Farthing Club will take you on a tour through Westminster and Central London, similar to what you're seeing right now. Depending on traffic, depending on what's going on, depending on the roadworks, will obviously depend on the route that you take. The added benefit to taking a tour right now, the streets aren't that busy in London, especially on a Sunday. Sunday's an amazing day to take a tour because uh, you have the added benefits of having a lot of the streets shut down. Okay, so basically trying to cycle with one hand. The experts have got no hands. <laughs> gonna, <laughs> gonna go see the Queen. We just had tea, tea with the uh, Scottish Regiment, now we're going into Buckingham Palace. And this is amazing because because it's Sunday. So, uh, uh, what, you ha what happens a lot of time in London on a Sunday, the mall is shut to traffic. Not always, just it happens to be this Sunday, no traffic. So it basically gives everyone a bit of a free rein to, to get on their bicycles and uh, cycle. Well, obviously you could rent a Boris bike. Not bad, eh? Not bad. This is amazing. <laughs> this experience you can get via Airbnb, also on the Penny Fiving Club website. And I can't recommend it enough. You'll be up and riding very, very quickly because the uh, expertise in the teaching is fantastic. I advise uh, bring your tails if you're going to come to this. Hello. <laughs> One of my favorite parks, uh, this park is phenomenally beautiful. Uh, if you like, a fan of squirrels and pelicans. The pelicans have got their own island, actually. It's a nice place to bring, the, bring anyone, actually. Bring your girlfriend, bring your wife, bring your boyfriend, bring the kids, feed the ducks, feed the pelicans, and uh, you'll have a great time. The queen is home, the flag is up. If I can be completely brutally honest, I think it helps to be fearless and confident with your balance. This is not a contraption for the overweight and those who are not very fit. The reason being, the bikes only have one fixed gear. It does require Hello. you to exert more energy than a usual bike. Hence the reason you probably heard me a little bit out of breath on a couple of occasions. And I generally cycle 12 miles a day. I know, this is fantastic. However, the view and the attention that you get from being up so high and make up for those extra calories burnt. See, I've got, I've got the knack of the one hand down. And there, of course, uh, old Queenie. She's over there. I don't know if she's uh, gonna come out and say hello to us, but the hope, we live in hope. Maybe, uh, maybe Charles will come out. Managed to dismount successfully. <laughs> Big bit of a bit of a crowd there. <laughs> As we stand in with our penny farthings in front of Buckingham Palace with the Queen at the window, uh, I have to say that has been very enjoyable. So there's a thing called a stack. Have you heard of what a stack is? Is this when you go over the handlebars? Nope, no, that's a header. Okay. So a stack is when you're, uh, everyone is sat on the bikes. Uh, 
static is what it calls it. Okay. And we take a nice picture. So if you're up for it, you look like strong lads. Do you fancy a stack photo? I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, step. Uh, standing in line. I'll be honest, I thought we were going to fall over like dominoes. But we, <laughs> but we managed it. You can hold it, yeah, absolutely hold it. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Hi everyone, last one. Last one. Then we gotta we gotta ride off into the sunset. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit of a tourist attraction now. Well, that was an enjoyable little stop. See back in the day, a normal bike used to be called a safety bike. Basically because this was considered quite dangerous and this was actually a bicycle. Hi. Hello. See the nice thing is everyone waves at you. you. Get back on this bike. Maybe you'll wave at you. We're approaching one of the most dangerous parts of London. This is Hyde Park Corner up here. I really hope we're going to turn around before we get to that point because approaching that roundabout around about in a car or a bicycle is actually really dangerous. I do it, I do it maybe once, twice a week. <laughs> On a penny farthing? Uh. I've honestly never had so many people wave and smile in my direction while on the road in London and it's not because they recognise me and it's not because it was a particularly sunny day and everyone was happy. It was a grey day in London and everyone was smiling, taking photos, laughing, cheering, um, mainly in the direction of um, Neil and Mark because they were in their top hats and tails. Well, that, was, uh, that was a little bit daunting. We just made it over the hump but this is much smoother now. Really, really depends on the road surface. Because there's no suspension on this bike, the bumpier the road, the harder it is. This road right here, incredibly smooth, to the point that I'm now having to slow down. <laughs> uh, we're going. The only brakes are the fact that you can literally put pressure on the pedals to slow yourself. My advice, if you do this experience, make the effort to dress up. If you have a top hat, wear it. However, I think for insurance reasons, when you're first learning, you may have to wear a helmet, but later you might be able to take the helmet off and swap it for the top hat. Honestly, if you decide to ride tall through London on the Penny Farthing Bike Tour, please let me know in the comments below, or I'd honestly love to hear how it went for you. And use the link in the description. If you're not an Airbnb user, use my code to sign up to Airbnb. First time you make a booking reservation uh, with that code, you'll get 40 or $50 off your accommodation. Even the even smiles from police officers. It's a uh, it's a nice feeling. Excellent. Tally ho. <laughs> So maybe it's worth making a trip down to London, spend the night in London with the booking in a nice Airbnb. Uh, you can always stay in mine on Old Street if you're tempted. Then book to go on the Penny Farthing bike tour. As the streets get narrower, obviously we have to slow down and make sure we let traffic pass. But to be honest, it's amazing how light traffic is being, given that this is London and drivers are notorious for generally their rude behavior normally. But today, I've seen none of that. Everyone's impeccable manners. Maybe everyone needs to be riding penny farthings through London to improve everyone's... put a smile on everyone's faces. Oh yes! <laughs> if you're worried the penny farthing won't fit you, they actually have penny farthings for all sizes. 
this being the smallest, which is actually very small. This is the one that I've been riding. And uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest, you can get bigger. But honestly, there's a penny farming for everyone, and everyone should give it a go. Cheers, guys. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Best way to finish the day? Right. It's nice, yeah. Well, as you can see, I made it, and I'm alive, and unlike Andy, I have no ripped trousers or anything. Successful day, honestly, one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had in a long time. And really, really big thank you to the Penny Farming Club for inviting me down. If you want to get involved, uh, do as I did. Uh, sign up to the Airbnb experience. The link is in the description below, and also the link is in, the, in my blog post. TheWanderingEnglishman.com, honestly, Fabulous, amazing, try it at least once, put it on your bucket list and have a go. Anyway, I'm gonna see you in the next video because you're gonna click that subscribe button, you're gonna click the like button. I'll see you then, cheers.